Steelers make some moves, and Matt Canada speaks. Big Deke news. Just two days ago, the Pittsburgh Steelers signed running back Godwin Iguabuque. Who? So yeah, dude only has 122 rushing yards in his career. But legit, pretty much half of them came against us when he was on the Lions. You remember that game, 2021? Mason Rudolph was the quarterback because Ben was out with COVID. The rain ended in a 16-16 tie. The Lions' no-name running backs were carving us up on the ground, and he just so happened to be one of those no-name running backs. Leave it to the Steelers to pick up a dude who really hasn't done anything in the league, but because he went off against us, we think he's actually good. Like, who's our next signing going to be? Travis Fulgham? But I guess, really, there's nothing wrong with this move because Godwin has experience as a return man. And with Anthony McFarlane being on the IR and Gunner doing Gunner things, Godwin might be our new starting kick return man. But as our RB3, I'm really not as excited. I'll die on this hill. I really think the Steelers should be trading for Izzy Abanacanda over on the Jets, the former Pitt running back. I think he is legit good. I think he'd be our perfect third guy because the Jets haven't even utilized him yet thus far this regular season. What do we got to toss him? A sixth or seventh round pick? Hell, at this point, I mean, I'd trade Najee straight up for Izzy. No cap. Another move the Steelers recently made was calling up defensive tackle Braden Fajoko from the practice squad to the active 53-man roster. Now there's officially no controversy surrounding Tomlin's family infinity gauntlet because all six Infinity Stones have members on the active team. So we don't have to worry about this practice squad count, this or that. Now that Fajoko's on the squad, no controversy. Should only mean good things going forward. But even on the field, I think this is a smart move because what is Braden Fajoko's calling card? That is being a run stopper. What could the Steelers defense use some improvements in? That is stopping the run. So voila, that is why Braden Fajoko is now on the squad. But lastly, we all know Matt Canada is on the hot seat with Steeler fans. The offense simply hasn't been good enough thus far this year, but also throughout a majority of his tenure as OC. The latest example of this was Monday night when the Steelers' defense outscored the Steelers' offense en route to the team's 26-22 win over the Cleveland Browns. But it all really hit a breaking point in the fourth quarter when the Steelers had the ball. And it was third and one. We just needed to get this first down. Would have helped us close out the game. But the call that came in was a QB read option. And the fans officially were fed up and wanted to make sure their cries were heard. And here's Matt Canada yesterday responding to those fire Matt Canada chance. You know, where some of the chants that they were saying, does that bother you personally though at all at any point? I mean, I know there's, the answer is what it was. You know what I mean? I got great belief in, in where we're at and what we're doing. I'm in charge of the offense. It wasn't good. That's it. That's part of the deal. It's part of the chair. I, I can't be stronger on the fact that I believe in our players and our coaches and I have no doubt it's going to be better. So the process is what it is. Our defense did a great job. Special teams did a great job. Offense did a good enough job at certain plays to get us a win. It's way more fun to sit here and talk to you with a win than a loss when you don't have a good performance. And we expect to have a better performance this week and moving forward the next 15 weeks and after. Say what you want about MC as a play caller or a coach. You can't say he doesn't have class when handling the scrutiny. You got to respect him for that. And as much as I'm fed up to this point, you guys saw my tweets on Monday night. I do think after this little cool-off period from Monday night to now, I, I do think it wouldn't be the wisest move to can him week two this early in the season. And dare I say, I do think he is going to improve. I do think this offense is going to improve. And I do think Kenny is going to improve. And we're going to be sitting at the end of September at 3-1 and one and probably on top of the AFC North. So hopefully Canada can improve prove to the extent where we could get the fullest potential out of this offense that's my biggest question mark at this point that's my biggest concern i think we can win games with canada i think we can be contenders still but are we really gonna get the peak are we really gonna get all that we can out of this young talent and this offense that is the question and that remains to be seen i do have 
my concerns about that. Because whenever I look at some of these other offenses around the league, like the 49ers last night, like the Dolphins with a Mike McDaniel, I'm like, man, it would be nice to have that type of play calling. It'd be nice to have that type of support from an OC. But let's, uh, I guess, just wait and see with Canada because let's just be real, he's not going anywhere. Not at least until the bye. And I think whenever we hit the bye, as I mentioned, we're going to be a better team. We're going to be a better offense. So I don't even think Canada gets canned at that point. I don't even think it's going to be as much of a thought. But that is it for today's edition of Big Deep News on a Friday. Let me know your thoughts on the running back signing. Let me know your thoughts on Fahoko getting called up from practice squad to the main 53. And any additional thoughts you guys have on Matt Canada. But that's it. Stay chilling. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe and peace.